All right. Hi, everybody. My name is Jessica Fetchage. I'm an associate director in the Global Learning Office uh, and work very closely on the summer of uh, Spanish language and culture in Barcelona summer program. Um, I am joined by Elisa Diana, who is a professor in the Spanish department and also the director of the program who will be in Barcelona this summer with our students. So I will, um, I will turn it over to Elisa, who has a short PowerPoint, and then I will jump in at the end. Excellent. Uh, <clears throat> hi, everybody. I see some names that I know. Uh, <clears throat> Hola. I know it's weird. We never speak in English, but here we are. Um, the dates for the program, the first thing, uh, June 18th, that's the day you have to arrive in Barcelona. So you have to leave here the first day. I mean, the, the day before and then July. Elisa, share, the, share the PowerPoint. Oh, oh, my God. See, I can see it in my screen and I think, oh, everybody can see it. Hold on. I forgot everything I learned last year. See, all forgotten. Thank you, Jessica. Hopefully. Yes. <clears throat> okay. The days for the program are June 18th. That's the day you need to be in Barcelona. And July 29th is the last day of the program. Wait, I want to take a picture. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's my that's my finish. Can you mute yourself? <laughs> Whoever you are. <laughs> program requirements. You need to have a GPA of approximately 2.5. You need to have an, uh, do an interview with me, Elisa Baena, that's my email. And then another interview with Jessica in her fancy calendar from the GLO. Then language requirements. You only need one year of college level Spanish. That means if you have taken 101, that's fine. Uh, we recommend because it makes a lot of sense that you enroll in Spanish course during the fall, winter of spring. So all of those there that are my students are good. And if you're taking any Spanish class, it's good. Um, first, let's talk about the classes. This is one of the buildings of the university that is called Universitat Pompeu Fabra. That's where the classes are. Um, the, the, <clears throat> the university is very close from the dorm. Everybody will, no matter what level you are in, in Spanish, will take three classes for a total of three credits. The classes are Monday through Thursday from 10 to four. Everybody will take a grammar, a conversation, and a culture class depending on your level. So if you have done 101 or 115, there will be a class for you. If you have done the 121 sequence, 125 or 199, the same. And the same if you have done 201, two or three and beyond. The culture class, there's two. They are both in Spanish and one is for the first and second group in the grammar column. So if you have done 101, 115 or 121. And the second class is the one that I teach and is for students who have taken 199. Uh, credits that you will receive. If you haven't finished the language requirement, you can come back and take 125 only and finish your language requirement if you have only done one year. If you meet this criteria, and it's all of them, you need to receive an A in all your classes in Barcelona. <clears throat> you need to miss only one class, which is difficult. And you need to go to all the cultural visits that I organize and that everybody has to come. And you have to improve in the post placement. We're gonna do a pre-placement at the beginning and another post placement at the end. And if you need to improve your score in that second exam, that is during the last week of classes. And you need to do an oral interview with me at the beginning and at the end so I can see that improvement, okay? Uh, for students who have not taken 199, so first and second year, uh, Spanish classes, these are the courses that you will take, and they are all Northwestern courses, okay? Um, <clears throat> the grammar class is called 190 SA, the culture class is 199 SA, and conversation is 191 SA. And the students that have taken uh, 199 and above will take 
301 SA as grammar or 302 SA. The culture class is the same is 215 SA and conversation is also the same is 202 SA. Okay, and there will be different levels for conversation. Um, now we leave the classes and let's talk about the dorm. The dorm where everybody's gonna live, including me, is called the Student Hotel in Marina. And this is, these are some pictures of the rooms, the tiny bathroom, the gym, and the kitchens. Like every group of rooms shares a kitchen. So the kitchen is much, much bigger than if it was in your own room. And there's a laundromat in the dorm. Um, there's a, as you can see the, the picture uh, on the right corner at the bottom, there's a few buildings and some of them have a tiny but a pool on the roof, two of them, I think. Then there's some common areas and when I visited there were some yoga classes and Zumba and all other things, but you know, I don't know how things would be right now, but this is so you get an idea of how the dorm is. The neighborhood where the dorm is, is one of my favorite neighborhoods in Barcelona. It's called Poble Nou, and it has a lot of coffee places and some landmarks like the Torre Akbar. <clears throat> the Bogatel Beach is the beach that is like at, um, close to there. And it's a, it's a very cool neighborhood that is up and coming and is uh, very trendy, I would say. There's the Palo Alto market. It's a very cool neighborhood. Um, when we are not in class, we're going to do, <clears throat> like I said, some cultural visits and this, uh, these are some pictures of some of the things in Barcelona. And as you know, Barcelona has a very interesting culture, history and nightlife. Um, these are some of the places that we'll see, Sagrada Familia, Casa Batlo, this museum, uh, the Miro House, and Montjuic, that is a mountain and there's a museum there and a castle. Um, this is something that if we are very lucky, we can see this happened the last time we were there. That's, those are human towers that they do. And as you see, there's no net or anything. And there's a little kid that goes to it. And it's very scary, but it's very cool to see. Uh, we will go in July one day to Montserrat. And we'll see this amazing uh, monastery in the mountain and the views are incredible. Um, and then we will go to Madrid. July 8th to the 10th in the high-speed train, and we will stay in a hotel. The picture in the middle is just a building that is close by that I like, but the hotel is the picture on the right. And while we are in Madrid, of course, we'll see some museums like the Prado and Reina Sofia, where we can see Guernica, and then we will see the Meninas in the Prado, and then the Picasso Museum in Barcelona has the other version of the Meninas on the left. And it's very cool to see that after you see the real painting. And don't forget, this is the end. The deadline is February 10th. The dates of the program, June 18th, June 29th, uh, July 29th. If you are interested, fill up an application online and Jessica is gonna tell you when those are gonna be open. Set up an interview with me and Jessica read student evaluations and make sure you have a valid passport, especially now that those take very long time. So that is it for me. There's some embarrassing pictures of past years. Uh, we don't need to see those. Um, Jessica. All right. Hi, everybody. I am going to share my screen just so I can show you where information lives on the website so you can see this is the glow website if you haven't visited uh, it is a very robust resource with lots of information uh, so as elisa mentioned uh, in order to be considered for the program you will submit an application through the global gateway portal um, Applications for summer programs are not yet open. Uh, we anticipate them opening the first week of December. So if you navigate to the program page right now, you'll see uh, a statement that says it's not opening, but opening soon. Um, so just keep an eye out uh, for that and keep checking back uh, in early December for uh, when it will open. Once it opens, uh, there's a number of steps. It will walk you through what you need to do. Most of it is up to you. Uh, you will need to meet with your school advisor who will have to sign off on your application. 
So keep that in mind. I would recommend scheduling those appointments now because their calendars do fill up the closer it gets to the deadline. One, because a number of students uh, want to study abroad. And two, it's also major declaration time. So schedule your advising appointments early uh, with your academic advisors. Uh, as Elisa mentioned, the application deadline is February 10th. That is a very hard deadline. Uh, there will be no exceptions. Um, so make sure to get your application in by February 10th and your interviews completed. As a reminder, you will need to schedule an interview with me and an interview with Elisa. So both of those interviews need to be scheduled before February 10th. If you are unable to get both interviews completed by February 10th, uh, we can make an exception as long as they are scheduled prior to the deadline, but that is not preferable. So uh, don't count on that happening. Please try your very, very hardest uh, to complete those interviews uh, before February 10th. I will tell you my calendar will be much more of a problem than Elisa's. So um, you might wanna get those on the books now. Uh, okay, so here is our website. You can find more information about the program by going to explore programs and looking up the program. There's really good information under get started. Um, here's just a general timeline of the process, if you go to the apply page, uh, this is where you can access the application. Uh, it, there's a little bit of information about the application generally here, but the more, majority of information and details will be in the application itself. <clears throat> so you'll go into the Global Gateway. Once the application opens, you'll, you'll start that application and again, make sure to complete all the requirements before February 10th. Uh, there will be no application review until after the deadline, and we anticipate that all admissions decisions will be made by March 1st. Uh, so the turnaround time is pretty quick. That's also why uh, all of the requirements need to be completed by that February 10th deadline so that we can <clears throat> turn around and make admissions decisions. Uh, we haven't run the program in two years. Uh, but what I can tell you is that historically it has been a very competitive program. So um, do with that information what you will. Uh, I usually recommend having a backup program this year that may be a bit harder than usual, but when we uh, meet for our interview, I'm happy to go over some possible backup program options. Um, in addition, because of COVID, some things may look a little bit different, both on the ground uh, and in the pre-departure phase. At this time, the program actually hasn't been formally approved. Uh, I am very hopeful slash mostly confident that it will be. Uh, we just don't have a timeline for formal approval yet. Uh, so my recommendation is once the application opens, just apply as if the program will be approved and we will be in communication uh, as things progress and we get more information. Um, all right, so this is the application information. And then if you want to schedule the um, interview with me, go to, oops, sorry. Um, under this get started, you can go to meet with an advisor and you'll go down to the bottom, see program interview, just click on schedule an appointment and you'll choose my calendar. It will not be my name, it'll be my region. So it'll say the Middle East, North Africa and Spain. So just choose me, choose program interview. Um, and uh, we can go from there. I, I often have students scheduling both regular advising appointments and interviews. I, just due to capacity issues, it would be my strong preference for you to just schedule an interview and I can answer any questions you have at that time. Um, I'm not really gonna have uh, the appointment times available to meet with everybody twice. Um, also happy to answer questions over email anytime. Um, but that's where you can schedule the interview with me. For Elisa, you just email her. So uh, a little 
a little less high tech. Um, this program is eligible for financial aid. If you receive it at Northwestern, there are also additional scholarships that you can apply for uh, as part of the, app, the GLOW application process. So uh, there's a box that you check, I believe, that says that you're interested in being considered for additional scholarships. Um, we don't yet have the program cost for this summer, but once I do, it will be on the program page uh, and it, it will be pretty clear how much everything is going to cost from both the program cost to additional personal expenses once you're on site. Is there anything I'm forgetting? All right. Uh, at this point, we can open it up for questions. You can either put them in the chat or unmute yourself and shut it up. That's a great question. So uh, if you go to the program page uh, on in the Global Gateway, the credits laid out there, Elisa uh, mentioned it earlier. But uh, if you are pursuing a minor, you will get two 200 level credits and one 300 level credit. It will be 202 SA, 215 SA, and then either 301 or 302, depending on your placement test when you get there. If you have done 199 already. Exactly. Uh, how much has it normally been in the past? I was just trying to remind myself because again, it's been two years. Uh, I believe it was 74. Four hundred is the program fee plus additional, uh, you know, airfare and personal expenses. Um, I should we should have a better idea at, at beginning of winter quarter. Um, we will have twenty seven spots available for this summer, and there is a wait list. Yes, <laughs> historically, I should say, right? We only have twenty seven <laughs> spots. They usually fill, and we usually have a pretty decent wait list. And if you're wondering if students are let in off the wait list, sometimes <laughs> it really depends on if students commit or drop. There's no way for us to tell. Totally unpredictable. Yeah. But usually I would say yes. Yeah. For whatever is that course. <laughs> Um, a question I got earlier today was about the language requirement. So if you have met the Weinberg language requirement or the language requirement for your school, you are eligible for the program, uh, even if you haven't taken any Spanish at Northwestern. Obviously, if you have taken Spanish at Northwestern above that, you're, up, you're more than eligible. Uh, and as Elisa mentioned, we do recommend that students take a Spanish class uh, sometime this academic year. So if you can fit one in during winter or spring and you weren't otherwise planning on taking a class, uh, that would be a great, a great thing to do. Any other questions? Oh. Uh, I'm gonna email it to everybody who RSVP. The, uh, the question is how will we receive the see the recording. And I think I'm going to put it in the newsletter, the GLOW newsletter that goes out on Mondays. Yeah, AP yeah. Spanish credit, yeah. If you yeah. have a three, yeah. Or, or a four or a five, yeah. If you have a four or a five, yeah, that's better. If you can right. take it. That's, uh, uh, so the question is, if you've taken all 200, all the 200 level classes required for the minor, is there a way to transfer the credit? Yes you will get credit for the courses still. They will just be likely general elective credits toward graduation and won't count toward the minors since you've already completed all the 200 levels. Uh, another question is, if you have an advisor for your major and another one for your minor, do you need to meet with both of them? Uh, Yes, neither of those folks will sign off on the application. That is your school advisor who signs off on your study abroad application. But if you plan to use this credit toward your major or your minor, we do strongly recommend meeting with those advisors as well. Um, because this is straight up Spanish credit, it, it's only 
probably necessary if you plan to declare a Spanish major or minor, um, but it's never a bad idea to, to let your academic advisors know that you're planning on studying abroad. Uh, can you apply to more than one study abroad program? Yes, you are able to apply to two per term. And as I mentioned, this is historically a competitive program, so we recommend applying to backups, although backup programs will be more limited this summer because of COVID. And we can chat about that when we meet. There is a newsletter for GLOW. Um, it goes out every Monday and you can sign up on our website. And that's a great place to learn about upcoming events, deadlines, all sorts of stuff. No more questions then? <clears throat> Usually we have stu students that went the year before and tell you like all the things that you want to know, but now you can ask us, what do students do at night? <laughs> or where do students eat? Do they cook? Do they buy? Is food expensive? But we, we can answer, answer those, all yeah. The questions. <laughs> oh, uh, one thing, uh, the, dorm, the dorm is new to this program. It's not necessarily new to Northwestern. Uh, but it's in a different neighborhood and a different um, different management than we had prior. Uh, all rooms are single rooms with their own bathroom. Uh, but as Elisa mentioned when she was talking about the dorm, uh, there is a shared kitchen facility. So you can cook for yourself, uh, which is recommended uh, for budgeting and just, you know, General knowledge. General, yeah, exactly. Uh, if you really wanted to, you could eat out for every meal. There's a small little cafeteria on the ground floor of the, the res hall. Um, you know, as it with any large city, eating out for every meal will be very expensive if you choose to do that. Uh, and grocery shopping is generally very inexpensive. So um, take that information and do what you will. I, I would say most students kind of do a, a combination, right, where they cook uh, they cook a lot of meals for themselves and then go out occasionally. Mm -hmm. um, the dorm also lends itself to eating together. So that's nice. And I know a lot of students in the past have cooked together and eaten meals together. It's a way to build community. Um, Lots of questions. Oh. Yeah, in terms of scholarships, do we independently search? Yes. So uh, there is a scholarship uh, that is offered through uh, the Global Learning Office that you uh, indicate through the application. So when you're submitting your application, you say, yes, I'd like to be considered for this scholarship. So that one's really easy. You don't really have to do anything for that one. There are other scholarships to which you can apply. We have a whole money matters section on our website uh, with a list of potential scholarships. But yes, you can look at that list and then um, search for other ones. If you receive a Pell Grant, I recommend strongly looking into the Gilman Scholarship um, this program is also eligible for the undergraduate language grant, although that is an extremely competitive award. Uh, so don't count on it, but certainly apply for it if you are interested. Mm -hmm. Another question is about the order of meeting with us or the advisor. So oh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, That's you can early. Yeah, early is good. But yes, yeah, so you don't have to meet with me and then Elisa, you can meet with us whenever it fits your schedule. Mm -hmm. um, are the classes just with other Northwestern students? Yes, you will be on campus at the UPF, but your classes will only be with other Northwestern students. Mm -hmm. um, Elisa, I'll let you take that weekly we schedule. schedule. Question. So classes are classes are from 10 to 4, Monday through Thursday. And Mondays usually we have a meeting like at 9 p.m. And Wednesdays we do a, a visit to a somewhere in Barcelona, a museum or whatever. And then uh, weekends usually students travel sometimes to Spain, but mostly to other countries. Um, but you don't have to, you can stay in Barcelona. There's plenty to do. And sometimes students regret. I don't know anything about what happens in Barcelona because I've been to Paris, London, you know. 
So also keep that in mind. And then we will go to Madrid for that weekend and you have to come. You cannot just go to another place. Right, yeah, so most, yeah. Sorry. Oh, in terms of independent sorry, in terms of independent travel, we generally recommend that you do that after the program ends. Um, it's only a six week program. It's really busy. Uh, use the time to spend in Barcelona and then travel afterward. So students interact with each other in Spanish. Some students, yes, some students no, and I recommend you do at least with your roommate at the time. Oh, you don't have a roommate. Sorry, that was all discourse. You won't have a roommate. With the people in your kitchen, you can cook and practice Spanish. But it's totally up to you. There's no pledge that you have to sign, but it would be a great thing if you decided, you know, for some hours of the day that you're just gonna speak in Spanish. With the local community, that's also up to you. In my class, if you're gonna take my class, I make students go and interview people and sometimes they love it. Most of the times it's a challenge, but they love it at the end. So also up to you, the students from UPF are there uh, smoking. Uh, I think they still smoke there. You can interact with them, totally up to you. The more you do, the more you learn. Make friends, go out with locals, that's the best way yeah it's a bit of a choose your own adventure right you you get into it what you put out of it every year there's a there's a cohort of students that say they're only going to speak in spanish to each other and some of them are super successful at that and some of them aren't um so you know it's it's up to you um do you have to tell anyone before you travel or is it relatively free to go wherever uh both <laughs> Well, I, because I'm a little pain in the ass, I want to know if in case you don't show up on Monday, I would like to know where you were. So I make you sign a little form. And so I know where everybody goes. It's just because it would be terrible if, you know, your parents call me and I have no idea where you went. So I yeah. want to know where you went, but that's okay. You know, I'm not going to like check your train to see if you arrive on time and you fly, but it's better that you tell me and everybody so far has told me. Yeah, but there's no restrictions on where you can go. Um, keep in mind that travel is a little more fraught with COVID and entry and exit restrictions uh, for countries. So just make sure that you understand the requirements for wherever you're going, both leaving Spain and entering a new country and coming back to Spain after, uh, after you travel, um, testing requirements and the like. And that will likely change quite a bit between now and June, but just something to keep in mind. And again, it's better to go after the program than to try to jam it into a three-day weekend, right? Because, right, there's a bunch of flight delays and... Yeah, especially now. Travel is much more challenging. <laughs> yeah, my stories are from, yeah, the past and there's it's always a pain and students end up arriving at 4 a.m. many weekends. So if you have no other choice, do it. But if you have the choice, stay later and do it. Yeah. all at once in a row. Yeah. More questions, yes. Yeah, uh, the question is what can be expected in the interviews? Um, gauging interest in the program, how it'll fit into your academic plan at Northwestern, um, seriousness of purpose, um, sort of general uh, kind of what's the, what am I trying to say like group fit but not that's not really what it is it's more just um, will you be a good community member and ambassador for Northwestern that kind of stuff and mm -hmm. um, your air in English yeah right Right. Spanish classes that you take in experience with Spanish, what do you want to do with Spanish? Right. Things like that. But you don't have to wear a suit for your interview. No. That has, yeah, that has happened. No suits needed. Yeah, you need to take it seriously, but it's not a job interview. Right. right. Exactly. It will impact the admission decision. Mm -hmm. Right. It's very important, but don't wear a suit. <laughs> well, if you want to, of course, but. <laughs> That won't get you more points. 
more questions. We answered everything. Oh, no, one more. no I, uh, the question is, should we wait for the application to come out to schedule appointments? No, I would schedule the interviews now. My, I, again, my calendar will fill up very quickly. Um, so don't wait. Uh, and what is expected in the application? Uh, you need to write a personal statement. Um, information about your academic plans. Again, your, your school advisor will need to sign off on the application. Uh, you'll need to upload a transcript uh, and that transcript will have to include your fall quarter grade. So uh, make sure to wait on that until winter break at the earliest uh, to make sure those grades are included. Uh, it's just an unofficial transcript that you can get from Caesar. Um, yeah, it's, it's not that hard, the application. Yeah. For me, you know, I have more, more time available in January. Uh, I'm really busy now, so I couldn't meet with you now. Maybe in reading week, we can start, but I think we can schedule the, all the interviews for January. And we, because now, thanks to COVID, we have Zoom, we can also do interviews in Zoom, so. Right, yeah if I'm not in the office. So that also adds a lot of flexibility for my schedule. Yeah, I will say um, I am available in person, not very much and on Zoom much more. So schedule on Zoom if you can. <laughs> for me, I'd rather meet with you in person Monday, Wednesday, th uh, Friday, if that helps, but we'll see. I'm sure we'll have to use Zoom and that's totally fine for Tuesdays and Thursdays. Everybody's leaving. So, are we done? Anything yeah. else? Up to you. Yeah, we'll hang out for a couple more minutes um, and I'll send out the uh, recording to everybody who registered. Uh, application should open in the next couple of weeks and schedule your interviews. Thank you everybody for coming. Yes, thanks.